If you have your Bibles, open up to Acts chapter 2. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about Pentecost and some elements of Pentecost. Now, we're a couple of weeks removed from Pentecost. It actually was a few weeks ago during our change of stall yes. ceremony. But we needed to do that because uh, Chaplain Broswell had, is outgoing and he's uh, going to be suffering for Jesus on the beach. I know he's watching, but he's going to be suffering on the beach in Hawaii. Somebody's got to do it. Suffer on the beach, so uh, suffer for Jesus laying on the beach. Yes. So, um, but uh, he had, he's leaving out going, I'm taking over chapel responsibilities here. But God, uh, I, I really feel that before we go any further away from the time of Pentecost, yes. we need to go back to just a little bit. Amen. But today is a special day, and that's the reason why I'm wearing my uniform today. Today is an Army birthday. If you didn't know it, June 14th, 1775 is the Army birthday. It started when the Continental Congress raised up 10 companies, a militia, yeah. to go, riflemen, to go to Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Virginia. But also it was in support of the Sons of Liberty, who in June, uh, actually back in April, invaded in a way, surrounded Boston. And, and so they were fighting against the British uh, tyranny uh -huh. there in Boston, and they lost at Bunker Hill. Uh -huh. But then uh, General Washington, who was the next day on June 15, 1775, was placed as commander of all the army, mm -hmm. of the Continental Army. And so he brought his troops and ultimately chased out the British out of Boston. Wow. In July 1775, it is also another birthday that the Continental Congress, at the behest of mm -hmm. General George Washington, Washington said that my army has to have paid chaplains yes. to be able to provide for the religious needs. So also there's another birthday coming up in July, and that's the Chaplain Corps birthday, Amen. both uh, 245 years old uh, this summer. Amen. Now, there was a spark during the American Revolution, a spark mm -hmm. to break away from tyranny uh, of the British rule of uh, King George, and, and uh, there was that spark that people rose up yes. and said, enough is enough. Yes. Well, there needs to be a spark today, yes. a spark to say, I've had enough of sin, yes. I've had enough of the devil, yes. I've had enough of demons, uh -huh. I've had enough of darkness, uh -huh. I've had enough. Yes. And that is what we as Christians need to do. Amen. We need to allow the spark yes. of revival, the spark of Pentecost the spark and flame of the God Spirit uh -huh. to invade our lives, uh -huh. to say no to sin, Amen. to say no to the devil, to say no, I've had enough. Mm -hmm. And being in military uniform today, I'm, rem I'm reminding you, as I'm reminding myself, that we are at war. Yes. Not Amen. just with the Taliban or any other adversary out there physically, uh -huh. but we are at war with sin. Amen. We are at war with the devil. We're at war with the flesh. Yes. We're at war with temptation. We're at war, a spiritual battle uh -huh. that is raging all around us each and yes. every day. And we constantly are in, need to be in our battle rattle. We constantly need to put our AAH a a a a a on. Uh, right. And we constantly need to have our IOTD on. We constantly need to have That's our right. weapons. The weapon, not an M4, but That's this right. is the ultimate Amen. weapon, the sword of Amen. the spirit. Amen. And we need to have our weaponry and our battle out, our battle rattle on, and we need uh -huh. to be ready and prepared for that ultimate battle. Yes. Now let's look at Acts chapter two. Acts chapter two, very interesting passage in Acts chapter two, because Pentecost is a special Jewish holiday, a feast day, kind of like a holiday of Thanksgiving, if you will. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter two, verse one. And when the day of Pentecost came, mm -hmm. they, the 120 disciples, were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came the rest of each of them. Mm -hmm. All of them began to be filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues yes. as the Spirit enabled them. Mm -hmm. Now there were staying in Jerusalem. God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. Yes. When they heard this sound, the crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking his own native language. Mm -hmm. Utterly amazed, they said, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of them, each of us, hears them in our own native language? Parthians and Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, 
Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene. Visitors of Rome, yeah. both Jews and converts to Judaism, Judaism, Cretans, Arabs. We all hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. Some, however, made fun of them. And said so they've had too much Mad Dog 2020, uh -huh. too much All wild right. turkey, All too right. much wine. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't that. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Lord, I pray that your spirit, your power be upon us today. And Lord, open up our ears that we may hear your word. Use me in these lips of clay to say what you want to be said in the mighty name of Jesus to change us forever. In Jesus' name we pray and declare Amen. 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 Now, let me backtrack. As we're talking about Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, I have to backtrack just a little bit and talk about what had transpired before. Because it was 50 days prior on the time of Passover. Mm -hmm. When Jesus, uh, especially at the Passover Seder, and we talked about communion. And, he, and at the end of the supper, this Passover Seder, he turns that meal, that Jewish meal, celebration meal, into the, his last supper. Yes. When we remember him in, our, in the communion, the Eucharist, the bread and the juice, the fruit yes. of the vine. And, and then Jesus, afterward, takes the disciples. And as they're singing a hymn, they go to the, the garden where he's eventually betrayed and given up for trial. And then the next day for crucifixion. Mm -hmm. And then he dies for the sins of the world on the cross when Jesus and the lamb that's being sacrificed by the high priest both die at the very same time. Yes. And I'm sure as that high priest is sacrificing the lamb, he can look up at the hill of Calvary and see Jesus. Amen. The lamb of God, yes. who take true lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, yes. gives up his last breath mm. and he dies. Then Jesus, after his resurrection, appears to his disciples many times. And then he even eats with them and goes fishing with them yes. and he talks with them. Mm -hmm. And there's all the, over 500 people see Jesus, re the resurrected Jesus. Yes. And then in Acts chapter 1, Jesus is taking them out of the city. And he's teaching them and talking to them. And, and then as he's talking to them, he starts to ascend up in heaven. Uh-huh. And as they're watching dumbfoundedly and their mouths are probably wide open, they yes. see Jesus going into heaven. The clouds open yes. up and part and Jesus goes up. Yes. And the clouds roll back. And then two angels appear next to the disciples. Yes. And they say, this same Jesus whom you've seen go into heaven will come back in the very same uh -huh. way uh -huh. that yes. you've seen him go. That's a promise in Amen. Scripture that Jesus is going to come again. And we are still waiting on that day. Amen. And let me tell you Amen. something. We are 2,000 years removed from that event. Yes. And they, the early disciples, knew that they thought Jesus was going to come in their own lifetime. Uh huh. Even fact so that if, that's why 2 Thessalonians was written. Because the people in 1 Thessalonians and the Thessalonica church, they thought Jesus was going to come back. Yes. And they start selling all their possessions and moving out to the countryside and living on mounds because they knew that Jesus was going to come back at any moment. Yes. And Paul said, had the right Thessalonians to say, wait a minute, some things have to happen first. This man of lawlessness, the Antichrist, yes. is going to have to rise first. Uh huh. So the disciples, after Jesus is resurrected, uh, ascends, excuse me, ascends into heaven, uh -huh. they go to Jerusalem. And they go in a 10-day prayer meeting. When Jesus ascends, that's 40 days yes. after Passover. Mm -hmm. So then they go to Jerusalem, and they go to the upper room, and they're in a 10-day prayer meeting, hmm. praying fervently for Jesus. Yes. I think today we have it backwards, don't we? We want to preach a sermon for, it seems right. like, 10 days, and only pray for 10 <laughs> minutes, Amen. and expect the very same results. Well said. But then, mm -hmm. the disciples, after their 10-day prayer meeting... They get filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. The sound of a rushing wing, that ruach, the Holy Spirit of God yes. comes rushing yes. into that upper room. Mm -hmm. And tongues of fire appear upon them. Uh -huh. And they go running out because they're praising God. So filled with yes. God's Spirit. Then they run out of that room, that upper room. And they start going into the temple courts and yes. praising God. And yes. that's when everybody starts hearing them in their own native languages. Languages that were previously unknown by the disciples. Amen. Right. From all over the Roman world, mm -hmm. Jews had been gathered 
for the special feast day. Yes. And then that is when they accuse the disciples mm -hmm. of too much wine. Well. And then Peter gets up and he preaches a 10-minute sermon, not a 10-day sermon, Amen. but a 10-minute sermon, <laughs> and get 3,000 souls come to Jesus Christ Amen. that very day. Amen. And when they all come and repent of their sins yes. and get water baptized by immersion into death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, yes. that is the church on fire. Amen. Let me ask you something. When will you ever get on fire for Jesus Christ? Uh -huh. So many Christians today want to live a lackadaisical, easygoing life. Yes. And I think it's taken the COVID virus to waken up the church yes. of what church has been like without assembly. Amen. That's right. We haven't been allowed to assemble. That's right. For the, what, four months now? Amen. 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 Some churches, are, uh, states are slowly allowing that back with social distancing, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We've been living without church. What do you think it's going to be like? And I think this is a foreshadowing of what's going to come in the future. Well, because what do you think it's going to be like when the Antichrist rises? Mm -hmm. That's right. And church will be taken forcefully That's away right. from us. That's and Christians right. will be persecuted, perhaps even That's in the right. streets. That's happening in some countries around the world today. Amen. Amen. That's right. Christians are being martyred and killed for their faith in Jesus Christ because they refuse right. to recant and turn to another religion. That's right. Or nothing at all. That's they right. hold on to Jesus Christ. Amen. And they die for it. Yes. Someday that's going to happen soon. That's right. Amen. And I think that's this right. event that we're going through now, these times, is a foreshadowing of what may soon happen, and maybe even in our own lifetime. Amen. It is a sad reality. Amen. But Jesus came to set a Fire. In Luke chapter 12, verse 49, Jesus says this, I have come to bring a fire on the earth and how I wish it was already kindled. Uh -huh. Jesus wants to ignite your life and light you on fire. Yes. Jim Morris of the door saying, come on, baby, light my fire, yes. right? As he's half stoned. Well, mm -hmm. Jesus wants to light your life on fire Amen. for him. Amen. He wants you to be on fire, ablaze. Jesus it was said in Luke chapter 3, verse 16, that John said of Jesus that Jesus would baptize uh -huh. in fire. Yes. And then in Acts 2.38, we see at the beginning of the church, and what happened? These tongues of fire rested upon the disciples mm -hmm. to ignite them for service. Mm -hmm. I personally believe it wasn't just the 12 that were ignited. I believe all 120 Amen. of the disciples that were gathered in that upper room were That's ignited right. for Jesus Christ. That's right. With Holy Spirit gasoline, if you will. That's right. To be on fire for Jesus. That's right. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, he says, quench not the spirit. Mm -hmm. Another translation, God's words translation says, don't put out your fire. That's right. There's an old country uh, preacher one time, and the way he pronounced it, and, or announced it, he said, far. Yeah. Don't put out the far. That's right. That's what you need to have, that far of God in Amen. your life. Amen. You know, don't squinch it at all. Right. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, uh, the, Luke is writing this, mm -hmm. and as he says, or excuse me, not Luke, John, John's writing this as he's imprisoned in the island of Patmos. Uh -huh. John says this, I, and he's writing of the words of Jesus. Jesus says, I know your deeds, that you're neither cold nor hot, and I wish you were either one or the other. Yes. So because you're lukewarm, either hot or cold, I'm about to spit you mm. out of my mouth. Mm. Literally. That's very vivid language for, I'm about to vomit you mm. out of my mouth. Well, Why? Because you're lukewarm. You ever have lukewarm drink? Mm -hmm. It doesn't, doesn't sit right, does it? That's right. You either want it really hot, like mm -hmm. a nice hot cocoa yes. or coffee, yep. or you really want it cold, like an ice cold Coca-Cola. That's right. Or bottled water. Mm -hmm. You want either hot or cold. Lukewarm just doesn't do it, right? And it doesn't do it for Jesus. That's so right. many times you want to straddle the fence mm -hmm. in Christianity. Well, you want to live like one thing in the world and uh -huh. have Jesus too, and you can't do it. Can't you do just it. can't do it. It reminds me of a story I heard of a, 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 a guy who married two women. Mm. And he was taken before the judge because mm -hmm. it was illegal in the state to have two wives. Yeah. So he goes before the judge, and the judge says, you have to, one his name was Kate, and one was Edith. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, uh, the judge said, you got to pick one. And the guy says, I can't, I can't. 
I, I just can't pick one. I have to have them both. He says, no, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Oh. <laughs> cake and eat it too. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We need to have that fire of God. Amen. Do you ever travel through Tennessee, Georgia, and you go on the road and you see those big houses along the expressway and it says fireworks inside? Mm -hmm. That should be the church. Amen. That should be the church today. Amen. We have the fire of God or should have the fire of God to the point where people know that they've been in church. That's that right. they walk away and they know they've experienced the firepower of God. Yes. Why does it have to be that we have to literally, it seems like someone may have to die in church in order to get a response out of the world. Uh -huh. Once heard of a story from uh, preacher Cecil Todd who once talked about a man who slumped over of a heart attack in a church. Hmm. And the EMS came and they went inside and I heard they pulled out five bodies before they got to the right one. Well. You know, that's hmm. the thing. Hmm. I also heard of a story of while this, during this COVID virus has been going on, of a guy who put mannequins and dummies and stuffed animals in his congregation because he couldn't allow the congregation to come and he wanted to preach to somebody, right? Uh -huh. Well, sometimes those mannequins, those dummies, those, those stuffed animals act just like the church. Mm -hmm. We're cold and lifeless and dead. Well, we need to be alive with the firepower of God. Jesus came to set us on fire. Amen. Allow his fire to infiltrate your life. Yes. When I was stationed in Korea, my wife and I, all the time, we'd go back and forth. We were stationed in Yongsan outside in Seoul, and we lived just about a mile away from uh, where I worked at the mm -hmm. 121 Cash. And so we would leave the gates, and we'd walk by through the streets to get to our apartment, and we'd walk by the cell phone company. Mm -hmm. And they had a female mannequin outside. And I would always joke with my wife, you know, there's my girlfriend. She's flirting. This lady's flirting with me. And I joke with my wife. She'd get a laugh out of it. You know, I'd always talk to the dummy. You know, just something to do. I'm, I have an odd sense of humor. But, uh, and we would laugh about it. Sometimes that's what we do in our Christian faith, right? That's right. We're like that dummy. Mm -hmm. We're like that mannequin. Mm -hmm. And we need to be alive yes. with Jesus Christ. That's right. When Jesus Christ comes in your heart and you're saved, you are made alive. It is I who no longer lives, but who? Christ. Jesus. That's Amen. right. Christ Jesus that lives Amen. inside of me. I don't long ago live. Anthony Kelly died when he was 14 years of age. Amen. Because I gave my heart to Jesus. Amen. And I was repentant of my sins. I was water baptized. I no longer live, but Jesus lives inside of me. Yes. Now, Anthony may want to try to creep in sometimes and push mm -hmm. Jesus out by allowing the world to live with me. There's always that tug of war. Yes. But Jesus lives inside of me. Therefore, the fire of God is always available for you as a Christian. Amen. Always available for you to be reignited, even if you allow it to die out a little bit. Reignite it. Allow Jesus to invade your life. Why? Because the presence of God is manifested in fire. Yes. If you check your Bibles, and I hope you do, check me out. Don't just believe me. Amen. Check it out. God's presence is manifested in more than any other way than by fire. Amen. Fire is the most way. Fire is the most common. Let me give you some examples. Yeah, it's the wind blowing, the ruach of God, the, the presence of rooting over the waters. And also he's the dove at the baptism. But more than any other way, like I said, he's manifested in fire. He's the fire on burning in the bush on Mount Horeb. Yes. He's the fire on top of Mount Sinai. Yes. He's that swirls around the mountain. He's the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Yes. He's the fire falling from heaven when Elijah prayed. Yes. He's the fire locked up inside Jeremiah's bones. Yes. His messengers, his angels are his flames of fire, as uh -huh. I read earlier. His word is like fire that breaks rocks into pieces yes. in Jeremiah 23, verse 9. He's the one who comes to baptize us in fire. Yes. He came to set up the world on fire. Mm -hmm. The day of Pentecost, tongues of fire appeared. Yes. Hebrew writer says that in chapter 12 that our God is in what? A consuming fire. Yes, amen. Peter describes this world being burned up at the end of all things by fire. Second yes. Peter chapter 3, verse 10. In Revelation, Satan and his demons and all who follow them will be cast into what? A lake of fire. God's presence is manifested in fire more than any other way in the entire Bible. Yes. More than any other way. Fire. Why? It's kind of like going back to Isaiah chapter 6. When Isaiah had to have his 
lips cleansed by the burning oh, fire yes. of the coals yes. on his lips to cleanse him yes. of a man of unclean lips. Yes. God's fire purifies us. It cleanses us. You ever hear about how they make silver? They have to melt it down, and what comes right. out of the top is dross, That's the right. impurities, and they scrape it off until they get to the pure stuff. That's right. That's what the fire God does. It takes all the impurities out mm -hmm. of me and allows us to shine with yes. his radiant glory inside of our lives. Yes. It takes the junk of us out yes. of us and allows him to fill us in us. Amen. Get it? We have to allow him the firepower of God. Amen. Inside of our lives. That you know what? If a mosquito were to bite you, it should fly away. There's power, there's power, there's wonder working power yes. in the blood of the lamb inside that man or woman. That's Let me right. tell you something. We need to have God's presence and power within our lives. Yes. And how do you do that? You do that by just saying yes to Jesus. Yes. Say, yes, Lord, come inside of me. Yes, Lord, here I am. Send me. Yes, Lord, invade my life. Yes, Lord, change me. Give me ministry opportunities. You know what? So many times, I'll start off my day before I go visit patients in the hospital. And the, the days that I pray and I say these words, I say, Lord, use me this day. There's always someone that comes along that needs my help. Amen. Extra, it's not just a high by in a hospital room, but it's somebody, chaplain, I really need to talk to you. Yes. You're just the right person. I need to talk to you right now. And it always works out that way. When I ask to be used, Amen. he will use you. Amen. Even when you feel sluggish, you feel tired, you feel depressed, you feel angry, you feel agitated. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Mm -hmm. God wants to use you yes. to minister to others. Amen. So you got to get rid of yourself. Get off of yourself and allow Jesus to burn in your life to help somebody else in life. Yes. Now I brought with me, excuse me, I jumped out of the scene real quick. Sorry about that picture. But I brought with me a staff. Now, this staff represents something that's found in the Bible. Back in Exodus, Exodus, you have the story of Moses mm -hmm. leading the people. Mm -hmm. Now, he's leading the people of God, and he's leading them. And, and there he is in Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. And they're going to go to war, the people yes. of God. They're going to go to war against the Amalekites. But... They needed help. Yes. The Malachites were skilled warriors. Mm -hmm. They were the special forces of their day, if you will. And the Israelites, they were just kind of like the revolutionary continental army. Mm -hmm. They were a bunch of ragtag farmers. They didn't really didn't know the art of war. Mm -hmm. Very few within the ranks of the Israelites really knew how to war. And so one of the reasons why God allowed them to wander in the wilderness for so long is that they can learn the art of war. Yes. They can learn to fight through the fire, if you will, yes. so that they can learn to prove themselves to be able to, not just to conquer land, but hold on to the land, Amen. the promised land. Amen. So they're going up to the Amalekites. And so Moses, with God's power, if Moses held up his staff, uh -huh. the Israelites would win in battle. Yes. And if you lower the staff, the Amalekites would start winning. So Moses figured out he had to hold up his staff. Yes. Now Aaron, his brother, and with the assistance of her, held up Moses' arm so yes. Moses could hold the staff. Amen. And you imagine, if you hold a staff for very long, 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the most, you start getting very tired, yes. and start, you start drooping down, yeah. and that's what naturally would happen. And the Amalekites would win. But in order for God to have the victory, to show his power that's right. and his might through something as simple as a staff, it was held up by Aaron and her Amen. for Moses. That's right. God wants to show you mighty miracles Amen. in your life. Yes. Now, when they won that battle, guess what they named that place? Yahweh Nisi. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my banner. Yes. The Lord is my banner. Yes. Let me tell you something, friends. God is your banner. Amen. God is your strength. Mm -hmm. God is your all, but you got to allow God to burn with inside of you. You have to allow him to burn brightly in your life. You have to allow him to, to manifest himself inside of your heart and your life to shine forth yes. his glory. It's time. It's time. It's time to allow him to you understand that Jesus came to set this world on fire. That God manifests himself 
through fire more than any other way. And lastly, we, we need to fan those flames of fire in our lives, of revival, uh, that we need God in our lives. We need Jesus in our lives. We need him more now more than ever before. We need him. Amen. Allow that fire to burn inside of your life today, inside of your heart today. It wasn't Mad Dog 2020, too much wine, the dollar wine, expensive wine. It wasn't any of that stuff that kept the, those disciples on fire. It was the Spirit of God. That's right. The Holy Spirit inside of them. And the end result was 3,000 souls were saved that day because of God's fire within them. God's power and presence was manifested on the disciples. And they were able to speak in glossia, the other lang unknown languages yes. for that day. And people interpreted that in their own native tongues from all over the Roman world. God had orchestrated all of this to show forth his power. Amen. And it was also repeated later in Acts with the household of Cornelius. Amen. God has a mighty, powerful ministry for you, a mighty, powerful message for you to declare, a mighty, powerful thing for you to do, whatever it may be. But you have to allow him. Amen. You have to allow him to take you over, so to speak, yes. and to use you. Just like the disciples here. They were used by God. They were, they were so overwhelmed with the Spirit of God that they were praising God yes. in these unknown languages. And God used them to save all those lost souls. What are you going to do today to allow God to use you? Amen. What are you going to do mm -hmm. to allow his fire to burn inside of you? I am not talking about religious dues, religious rituals, religious things that we'd all do. I'm talking about pure, simple, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, use me. Yes. Jesus, take me. Send me. Here am I. Use me for ministry. Yes. It, it, time, it's, it's time to start now. Amen. It's time. Your life changes for Jesus now. Amen. That's Allow right. that fire. To burn inside of you and never stop. The fire of revolution with our early, early army, the beginning of our nation, started back in the early days uh, of 1775. And I believe it has not stopped. Amen. That's it right. has not stopped. And physically, throughout the world, and look at the influence of that spark of revolution and what happened, but also spiritually. There needs to be a revolution or a revival, if you will, in our lives to change us, to get us from stop doing the boring board game called church and start being the true church of the New Testament church, the early church, and how they acted and what they did. And they were sold out for Jesus Christ so much so that they went and save, seek and save the lost. They went out and did whatever they could to go the highways and the byways to find people for Jesus. Amen. Do you share your life? Do you let your light shine, that fire inside of you shine to bring all the lost so you can minister to them, that you can help them in any way possible to lead them to the cross of Calvary? Because ultimately, that's where the answer is. The answer for COVID is not found in science. Amen. That's right. Science will never find that's right. the ultimate answer. Amen. The ultimate answer is God. Amen. That's the ultimate right. answer is God. Mm -hmm. Jesus right. is the answer for all viruses. Jesus is the answer for the rioting. Jesus is the answer for all the unrest and the yes. turmoil and, and the lack of peace in this world. Jesus is the answer. Are you going to allow him to be your Yahweh Nisi? Are you going to allow him to be your Pentecost? Are you going to allow him to be that fire inside? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you touch us here today that you fill us with your spirit, that your grace and your mercy and your love be upon us and in us and work through us. Lord, change us. Change the church today. We've taken so many things for granted. We have allowed worldliness to creep in even into the church and into our faith and our practice of our faith. We've allowed so much to happen. And, and this COVID virus has caused us to think, to appreciate church, to appreciate the times that we gather together as a body of believers, uh, to appreciate the little things, even gathering, singing hymns or choruses or listen to praise band or without music at all, whatever it is, Lord. We've 
we appreciate those things now. And Lord, we are sorry for taking them for granted. Lord, let there be a new Pentecost, a new fresh start, a new fire, a new revival, a new revolution in our lives to change us forevermore, Lord God. It is my prayer that your power and grace and mercy flow through us like a conduit, a channel of excitement, a channel of fire through us, Lord, to seek and to save those who are lost. So, Lord, may we all realize we're at combat, we're at war. We all need to have our duty uniforms on, our battle rattle ready, our go bags ready to go at any moment's notice to go out and win this world for Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you. And we know that there's soon a day coming when you will return. Oh, yes. And we're waiting for that day because it could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be at any moment. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, we're waiting for you. We're waiting for you. Come, Lord Jesus, come. In Jesus' name we pray, declare and say, amen. Amen and amen. It's my prayer that God's grace, his mercy, his love will be with you today. It is my prayer that God will use you in extraordinary, mighty ways for his kingdom, for his glory. Allow the fire, the fire of God, the fire of God yeah. to burn inside your life today. In Jesus' name.